My name is Daryl Barnes and I want to talk about the brain and I have made a picture and hopefully I will have a download below the video where you can pick this up and look at not only at the drawing but also the descriptions below. So after you get finished you can have something to help reinforce your learning. When I think about the brain and I look at the lateral aspect of the brain, that is the cerebrum and then down lower might be the pons, the medulla oblongata and out back the cerebellum. This is the central sulcus and this is the lateral fissure or lateral sulcus. So these are some big features on the outside of the brain. In the handout that I gave you, I listed number one, the post central gyrus. This is important because this is the area where sensory, incoming sensory information to the brain helps a person localize where is the sensation coming from. The thalamus pre-sorts the information before it gets to the postcentral gyrus of the parietal lobe of the brain. The next thing that I have listed is a somatosensory area, and I want to connect it to the occipital lobe in the back. Think about this task. If someone gave you an apple and told you to close your eyes before they gave you the apple, by feeling of this apple, the stem, the shape, you would be able to get a visual picture. What is this thing? This is called stereognosis, the ability to use your senses to determine the shape or the identity of something. This somatosensory area is what would pull in your tactile sensation and your visual information to give you a balanced idea of what this item happens to be in your hand. Stereognosis is the word. When we look at the side of the brain, number four is the auditory association area. It is in the temporal lobe. I also drew in B and W. B represents Broca's area, which is for language production, and W is for Wernicke's area, which is for language understanding. Also in this picture, five is the pre-central gyrus in the frontal lobe. This is motor output so that once you process information coming in to the post-central gyrus, then you can make, your body can make a response back to that area that you received the sensation from originally. I know that this is out of order, but on the chart number 16 is the lateral fissure or sulcus and it separates the frontal and the parietal lobes from the temporal lobe. Notice that there's not really a, a distinct demarcation line marking the lobe in the back, the occipital lobe from the other lobes. Also, another thing that's kind of neat is that when you and I learn the names of the bone, bones of the skull, frontal, temporal, parietal, occipital, you basically learned the lobes of the brain. So that's kind of neat when things kind of fit together in science. I love it. This sulcus right here, I labeled as number 17. That is the central sulcus. And as you can see, it separates the frontal from the parietal lobe, a very important part of the brain. One of the things that I notice is in, in the embryologic development of the brain, it, might, it starts kind of as a, a little tube, but as it folds upon itself, it forms some of these flexures in the brain. The next picture I want to draw is basically a magnification of this picture. Something a little bit up close. And the first thing that I like to draw in here is the pituitary gland. And then I draw in the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata. One of the things that I notice is that the fourth ventricle is exactly behind the pons and this is what gives rise to the arbor vita, the tree of life, that is the cerebellum. Remember that the cerebellum is what controls motor learning, motor function. Notice too that there is also a foramen on the back side of the brain and this is what allows for cerebral spinal fluid movement. There are other foramina in the brain area that allow for this, but this is one I featured. It's actually number 19 in your picture. 
when I continue this portion of the brain directly upward and wrap it over, there is a tadpole looking feature back here that's the pineal gland. And then on the back side of the midbrain are the superior and inferior, co inferior colliculi. I'll come back and describe these in just a moment. Behind the pineal is the corpus callosum wrapping upward and forward and then extending downward from the corpus callosum is the fornix. Now let's go through and label all of this and make sure that we understand what we have drawn. Number seven is the pons. This is considered a bridge. Why is it considered a bridge? Because it bridges cerebellum, uh, diencephalon, brainstem. Number eight is the medulla oblongata. It's important because there are tracks here, white tracks that carry, and why are they white? Because they have fat. Why are they why they have myelin on them. These are what carry information to the brain and then information away from the brain. Also, while I am here, let me talk about it for just a second. At the very bottom of the page, it says the reticular formation is important in sleep, arousal, involved in pain transmission and mood. It kind of bridges this area between the pons and the medulla oblongata, the reticular formation. Number nine. This area right in here is called the midbrain, and this is including the superior colliculi, which are for visual processing, and then the inferior colliculi for auditory processing. These collectively, there are two humps top, two humps bottom. They are collectively called the corpora quadrigemina. Corpora means body. Quad means four, and Gemini means twin. So they kind of exactly almost explains the shape and configuration of these. Number 10 is the pituitary. The pituitary gland is the hormonal gland that controls most of the functions in the body. It does have a connection to the brain in the posterior aspect, and then the frontal aspect has a connection through what's called the hypophyseal portal system. It's a capillary network, and it connects to number 14, which is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus regulates autonomic sleep, weight, thirst, hunger, body temperature, hormone production, controls pituitary secretions. I say hunger, anger, rage, aggression, sex drive. It monitors your body basically. And if there are any corrections that need to be made, it does so. And that's what we call homeostasis. The area directly above that, number 13, is the thalamus. Now while I'm thinking about it, let me remind you that the thalamus is what makes the major wall of the third ventricle. By the way, 18 is the fourth ventricle, which we see in front of the cerebellum. There is also a first ventricle coming out of the plane this way and another ventricle into the plane of the whiteboard this way. There are four ventricles. Remember in the ventricles, we have the choroid plexuses, especially in the first and second ventricle. These are the networks that make cerebral spinal fluid. Let's go back to the order of numbers. This is the corpus callosum. Lots of white nerve axons that connect one hemisphere to another. In a weird and crazy deal, people that have epilepsy sometimes will have this whole thing cut right down, go through the longitudinal fissure of the top of the brain, and then the, the, the anterior portion is cut first to see if this helps stop the reverb of epilepsy. And apparently the back portion is cut later if these people don't get relief. Apparently the back portion is important in visual sharing between the brains. 12 is the fornix, and this is an output of the limbic system, the hippocampus, which is important for memory and learning. Notice at the bottom that amygdala and hippocampus are part of the limbic system and influence memory, learning, behavior, and emotion. So remember 13 is thalamus, 14 hypothalamus, 15 is the pineal gland, 
And the pineal gland a lot of times looks like a little tadpole to me. It secretes melatonin. It has to do with sleep and wake cycles. It has to do with seasonal changes in critters. Also, it's the main reason I tell you as pre-nursing students, as soon as you can get off the night shift in your nursing career, do that. I don't think it's natural for you to stay up all night and sleep all day. I think it interferes with brain chemistry and just check into it and look it up and see what you think about that. Remember, let's go back to 16 for just a minute. 16 is the lateral sulcus. 17 is the central sulcus in the brain. This might be called the lateral fissure, by the way. And then number 18 is the fourth ventricle. And then number 19 is a foramen that I drew here to show Pathway, circulation pathway of CSF through the brain. Remember this, I hopefully have a link to this very download right below the video. So go down and check that out and hopefully you can download a PDF and this will help you in your learning. Keep up the good work. Grandma Barnes says A plus 100.